Uh, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the presentation on Motif Bio. Uh, I'm Graham Lumsden, Chief Executive Officer. Um, the usual disclaimer, we're a PLC. Could be forward-looking statements. So the unmet need. Uh, this is Dr. Margaret Chan, Director General of the World Health Organization, worried that if we don't have enough new antibiotics coming to market soon, we're going to be back in a pre-antibiotic era. And what she's referring to is we've kind of taken antibiotics for granted. If we have an infection, don't worry, there's plenty of antibiotics. Um, she's worried that we're maybe five years away from a cut finger or a grazed knee being fatal again. She's worried that patients who require a knee replacement, we depend on antibiotics to be able to do that surgery. That may no longer be possible. Patients diagnosed with cancer and requiring uh, chemotherapy, you require antibiotic coverage. So this is pretty serious stuff. Uh, here in England, uh, the chief medical officer, uh, Dame or Dr. Sally Davis, is also equally concerned and is speaking at uh, various uh, international fora about the need for novel antibiotics. So, so we have a novel antibiotic at Motif Bio, which is called Icloprim. And the interesting thing about Icloprim is we have data expected on the first of our phase three trials. Phase three is the final stage in clinical testing in the second quarter of this year. In fact, we're on track to have two sets of phase three data readout this year. That means that we can submit what's called an NDA or a new drug application uh, to the FDA in the US and a marketing, authoriza marketing authorization application to the European regulator at the beginning of next year. And we expect to have a decision, obviously, hopefully an approval from FDA before the end of 2018. Icloprim is very different to all other antibiotics in development. It works in a very different way. And that's important because if bacteria have developed resistance to other existing antibiotics, Icloprim can still be effective. Once we have the two phase three trials completed this year, we expect to move on to a third phase three trial in a completely different indication. The first two trials are in the most common cause of gram-positive hospital infections, something called acute bacterial skin and skin structure infections. This includes deep abscesses, infected surgical wounds, and something called cellulitis erysipelas. 3.6 million patients annually hospitalized in the United States with ABSSSI. The second indication that we're targeting with Icloprim is something called hospital-acquired bacterial pneumonia. By definition, people enter the hospital without an infection. And it's only if they pick up pneumonia at least 48 hours after they entered the hospital is it defined as hospital-acquired bacterial pneumonia. So again, think about somebody going in for perhaps a hip replacement, otherwise healthy, <laughs> and after they've been in the hospital for 48 hours or more, they suddenly have a nasty pneumonia. They also have a mortality risk, risk of dying, of 20% to 50%. Equiprim seems very well suited to hospital-acquired bacterial pneumonia because as, as Equiprim is administered intravenously, it concentrates in lung tissue. Back to our acute bacterial skin and skin structure infection, uh, there are 3.6 million patients in the US every year, and about a quarter of them also have kidney disease. This is what we know as the baby boomer generation, people in the 60s and 70s who are starting to suffer from things like kidney disease, diabetes, other things that make them more susceptible to these infections. The standard of care antibiotic today, something called vancomycin, is a very poor fit for these patients who have serious skin infections plus kidney disease with or without diabetes. Icloprim is an ideal fit for those patients. And as you can see on this slide, that's just under 1 million patients annually just in the United States. Icloprim is very well differentiated against the three standard of care antibiotics used today in a hospital. That's vancomycin that we just mentioned, linezolid, and daptomycin. Icloprim can compete very well against the three standard of care antibiotics. We've been doing a lot of market research with physicians who will ultimately prescribe Icloprim, as well as payers who will pay uh, to put Icloprim in the hospital so the doctors can prescribe it. They are very positive about the benefits of Icloprim. And as you can see at the bottom of this slide, when asked about the next 20 patients they expect to treat with serious skin infections and kidney disease, 
They expect to treat about 40% of them with equiprim if there's severe moderate renal impairment. If it's mild renal impairment, they expect 30% of those patients to get equiprim and 20% of patients even without renal impairment. So if you do the math on this, we're talking about peak year revenue of several hundred million dollars, just for the first indication. Uh, here's what I said earlier, um, without going into all the details because we don't have time, you see a lot of names on the left of the slide, you see a lot of names on the right of the slide. These are all the other antibiotics that are either on the market or in development. Equiprim, highlighted in red, is a very different and underutilized mechanism of action. That's very important when these bacteria are mutating and developing resistance to the other antibiotics. One of the other key differentiating aspects about equiprim is it's very fast acting, or what we call rapidly bactericidal. So here on the chart, the green line is equiprim, and it dives down to the baseline about twice as fast as the red line, which is vancomycin. Our phase three clinical trials are comparing equiprim and vancomycin. So we're hoping that we see a faster effect, which translates into fewer days in the hospital, which is a huge cost saving for hospital systems all around the world. So these are the two trials that are currently underway. Uh, 1,200 patients, 160 trial sites. The first one we disclosed at the beginning of February is already finished. We're just waiting for the uh, clinical research organization to collect all the data, and we're on track to be able to share that with everyone in the second quarter of this year. I mentioned hospital-acquired bacterial pneumonia. This is what's called a healthy volunteer study. I'm guessing most likely uh, students who uh, received equiprim intravenously and then uh, samples were taken from their lungs. And as you can see on this slide in the box highlighted in red, equiprim concentrates in lung tissue. Unlike the other two antibiotics on this slide, linezolid and daptomycin, which do not concentrate in lungs. If you have a patient with pneumonia, it seems to be a good idea if you have an antibody that concentrates in the lung. We also have what's called phase two clinical trial data that showing that patients with hospital-acquired bacterial pneumonia have very good results when treated with equiprim. So we're all set to go into a phase three trial with hospital-acquired bacterial pneumonia as soon as we're finished with the two pivotal phase three skin trials that are currently underway. We've been public since April 2015 on AIM, and we listed on NASDAQ in November of last year. So we're not quite two years old as a public company. We've raised approximately $65 million in just under two years. Um, externally, our major shareholder is Invesco, currently holding about 25%. Sabi is a healthcare-focused uh, institutional investor in the United States that uh, anchored our NASDAQ listing last November, and Aviva, I'm sure you're all familiar with, uh, Strongholder. We have a great team. Uh, my background, uh, veterinary surgeon, worked for Merck and Co. Inc. for 26 years, ran a $3.2 billion global business, very familiar with regulatory, clinical, preclinical, patents and litigation, all that good stuff. We have a great uh, chief medical officer, uh, Linda Burns, our head of commercial, who successfully launched antibiotics into this space. Uh, our scientific advisory board includes two individuals in the UK, Mark Wilcox in Leeds, and uh, Matt Dryden uh, in Southampton. I'm being told I'm completely out of time, so we're back to the first slide. Great opportunity if you're interested in participating in the antibiotics, an aimlisted company with two phase three data readouts this year, and we're downstairs with an exhibit stand. Thank you.